Corliss, the founder of Luxury Groomer, house call dog grooming service in Manhattan. And I'm here today with Stacy Aldridge, the owner of Who's Walking Who. And can you explain to us what your company does in Manhattan? Yeah, so the company is Who's Walking Who, dog training behavior. And we've been in New York about 20 something years. We have a staff of about 10 trainers. And we specialize in all different kinds of things from basic obedience through behavior, aggression, OCD, nutrition, all kinds of things. Help you pick the right dog, whatever you need for a dog, that's what we do. So I'm in her home because I just got done grooming her rescue dog, PETA. And PETA had a little bit of a hard time um, in the groom shop environment, maybe the smells of the other dogs, or the length of time they have to be there. So we started doing house call, which has worked out a lot better. And PETA's doing really, really well. You can see calm and relaxed and fresh. And it only took about an hour to an hour and a half. That's the average for small dog haircut. But speaking of rescue dogs and this situation, I wanted to talk to Stacy about things you can do to prepare your dog for the experience of being groomed. Because you can start when they're puppies and there's lots of things you can do instead of waiting for the groomer to just figure it out. Can you <laughs> tell us some of the things people can do to prepare their dog for the lifetime of grooming that they're gonna need? Yeah, absolutely. We always start with our clients, you know, for puppies. A lot of times we meet them, meet them as puppies. We always start right away. You can never start too young. Sometimes I'll start with like the dog nail file so you can just start filing their nails. Even if you're just holding their paw, just doing a little bit. Lots of handling exercise, you know, put your fingers in their mouth, rub around, get in their ears, like just really handle them. But for a little short amount of time, not like I'm gonna deal with all the nails at one time, I'm gonna do everything at one time. It's a little bit, like I'm gonna do like two minutes here or do two minutes there, or maybe I incorporate when I'm playing fetch or talk or something like that. So it's very lighthearted. This is not the time to try and like dominate your dog or anything ridiculous like that. You have to groom them for life, so you want to make it as pleasant as possible. I'm not saying any dog loves grooming, but they can tolerate it and accept it, you know, and that's that's kind of good enough. Like little Peta here, she's a rescue, she's, with, um, she's from Animal Care and Control, um, and uh, I have no idea what her history is, and I probably don't even want to know, but she doesn't um, play well with others all the time. And so, you know, home grooming for her is a lot less stressful for her, it's a lot less stressful for me, and honestly, it's really much more convenient. It's so much easier not having to like, not having to, very not, silly. not having to like take her somewhere and wait and you know, all that stuff. This is so much easier and this is so much better. I recommend it mostly. I actually recommend home grooming for the vast majority of my clients just because it's so much easier. They're just in general, usually more comfortable at home, but especially for rescues. And in fact, Stacy also, um, is involved with a group called the Sato Project mm -hmm. that deals with a lot of rescues. Yeah. Um, and so for dogs like that, you're talking about coming to New York from a foreign place, yeah. all sights and sounds and everything else are brand new. So the minimizing that for grooming, because you've got sound of clippers or scissors or different smells of tools and everything else, if you can minimize these experiences, especially if they're brand new. Some of these dogs in Puerto Rico have maybe never been groomed before. Um, I mean, these dogs, I mean, the, the Sato Project is a, it's a, we're a rescue organization that pulls dogs off Dead Dog Beach in Puerto Rico. So these dogs have definitely not been groomed, you know, most of them when we find them, they're emaciated and have had, you know, some level of abuse. So everything is a huge shock to them. You know, even just by brushing your dog, any kind of handling helps. And sometimes, you know, like maybe the first couple times you have a home groomer come in, maybe you don't do the whole thing. Maybe you just have like a bath and a little towel dry. You know, like you don't kind of, you kind of ease into it. You don't need to have them come over and do every single thing yeah. the very first time and like completely freak the dog out. But I would say, do give them a big power walk before the grooming to help with the stress. Yeah, when you come, they're, you know, you wear out their body a little bit and they're a little calmer, their mind is calmer and they're a little more at ease to be taken to being touched and handled and new sights and sounds instead of maybe you just got home from work and then have the groomer come over right then and the dog's a little wound up less than ideal scenario. Totally. Yeah, well thank you so much for your input. And there's gonna be links below for um, Sato Project especially and Who's Walking Who and of course Luxury Groomer. Thank you so much for okay. sharing your home and PETA, you were so well behaved, I'm so proud. Such a good girl, most of the time. Most thank you so time. much. Thanks thank for you. watching, bye bye. bye.